Hi, so this video will be a bit different from what I usually post on my YouTube. Um, I will be technically um, summarizing what we learned in chemistry for the first semester and this video is gonna help who is taking chemistry right now to like um, know what was going on in first semester and for those who haven't take chemistry yet then i think this video will help you to understand what chemistry what what we will what you will be learning in chemistry in first semester and what the concepts is all about i will not be talking about unit one because unit one is basically talking about physical change and chemical change and the state of matter which is solid liquid and gas and it's very straightforward is talking about in that unit it's it's not it's not hard like unit one is the most straightforward one because like i believe we all learn that in middle school about solid liquid and gas this different state and like this the the graph how it changes the state right and so and i think you guys can technically know what's like physical change and chemical change like chemical change is like technically a new substance is formed and like physical change is like um it can be observed without changing the composition of the substance and you can use the five senses which the which are like sight touch smell hear and wait Wait, wait, sight, hear, taste, touch, and smell. Yeah, so like the unit one is very straightforward. So I will not talk about unit one. I will just jump into unit two, which things, which like things gets complicated and you will be um, confused. Yeah. So in unit two, the um, topic is about atomic structure and the periodic table so this is when things get complicated and you actually need your um, imagination to imagine what it looks like because first of all chemistry is a very abstract topic let me first give you a brief introduction you cannot see atoms nor elements atom of an element it's very small if you remember that atoms is the smallest unit on earth so you cannot see it so you have to imagine it and it is very abstract so i will use i will try my best because i have already like explained these concepts to a lot of my classmates who are taking chemistry right now and they all get, get it so i hope that i can do the same i hope that my explanation in this video will be the same as how i explained to my peers uh in unit two let's talk about the history of atomic structure and he will give you all these scientists names and how they discovered atoms and the structure of an atom so a brief because i'm not going to teach this lesson okay i'm just giving you guys a summary of it so first of all um Democ the, the greek philosopher Democ De democritus um said that all matters are made out of atoms which cannot be split up into split split anymore and so democritus is the first one who came up with this idea and then dalton is the first scientist um formulated a more precise definition of the indivisible building blocks of matter that we call atoms so dalton is the first scientist and his model has no name so he didn't have a name for his model and Dalton did reactions the combination of different elements he found out that the elements reacted in the same ratio the smallest part of an element that retain its chemical property is the atom he thinks of them as solid balls like if you have 16 mass of oxygen and two mass 
unit of um, hydrogen, then it will have this 18 mass unit of hydro, no, water, which is like H2O. So like the, the mass is conserved. And like, as I say, the elements react in the same ratio. That's, that's his conclusion of it. Okay, I really hope that this is making sense, okay? Uh, the second scientist is Thomason, and he discovered the existence of electrons and as he studied the deflection of cathedral rays in electric and magnetic field. So Thomason deflected the cathedral rays using an external magnet and showed that they consist of a stream of particles having both mass and negative charge. And so that is the first evidence of electrons. And so Thomason proposed that an, atom that an atom could be thought of as a uniform positive sphere of matter in which electrons are embedded like raisins in a cake. So his model name is called the plum pudding model. And his discovery was important in proving that the atom was not the smallest entity that made of matter. So there is electrons in atoms. And then Rutherford's model, which is the third scientist, he discovered the existence of nucleus. Uh, he did not have a name for his model. And the way, so he showed that atoms consisted of a tiny nucleus which contained all the positive charges and almost all of the mass of the atom. It is surrounded by a cloud of electrons so the reason so how he proved so how he proved that it is surrounded by a cloud of electrons is that he passed a stream of alpha particle which is like a it's like a ray of light okay he has a stream of alpha particles at a gold foil it's the gold foil is very thin it's a very thin gold foil and most of the particles passed through this shows that the atom is mainly made up of empty spaces so that's why he concluded that it's surrounded by a cloud of electrons and some particles were deflected so that shows that the atom have a small density small dense part positively charged center so um yeah so this is the fourth scientist and his model gets super confusing for most of the people so this is Bohr's model he this is the fourth scientist um so he developed an explanation of atomic structure that underlies regularity of the periodic table of elements his atomic model had atoms built up of excessive orbital shells of electrons. So he, his model looks like this. And he thinks that, he, he thinks that it's just like, um, how do you say it? Like, like, the nucleus is the center and then there are shells around it and then like electrons just orbits around it and, and then so so he so his experiment is that he shone light with a range of wavelengths at a sample of hydrogen so he used hydrogen element to do this experiment and then the result was that only light of specific wavelength were absorbed and his conclusion was that electrons move in specific orbits around the nucleus and the energy difference between the orbits is fixed so it is not in a cloud of no so that this atom does not it, it is not surrounded with a cloud of electrons because in a cloud of electrons the 
the space between each shells or like the energy difference is not fixed it's in a cloud so it's like very like scattered around but then his experiment but because of Bohr's experiment he said that it is fixed so that's why when he shone the light like each um like the wavelength of each color is that thick so that's why he said that the energy difference between the orbits is fixed and then his model is called the planetary model because electrons move around the nucleus like planets around the sun okay this is the last one and it's called the the, the last scientist is called Scrudinger and his model is called the qu quantum mechanical model and this is one a a so he proposed the idea of an orbital, not an orbit. Orbital and orbit. So or I will show you a picture here. And so he, his experiment is pretty similar to Bohr's. And, but um, he, so his experiment is the same thing as Bohr, but for other elements. Bohr only used hydrogen element, but Schrodinger used other elements. And the absorption and emission spectrum were more complicated than expected because of different elements. So different and different sizes. So that's why the emission spectrum and the absorption and the absorption spectrums were more complicated. That's the reason why. And then electrons are arranged in subshells. So a subshell is that when the main shell is full, this main this main shell will split into subshells. And yeah. And the exactly in the exactly position of an electron cannot be determined. Only the probable position of the electrons can be determined. And the reason is that electrons jump around in an atom. So that's why he, he said that the position of an electron cannot be determined, but it can, but the probable position of an electrons can be determined. Like you get it? And I will show you this picture of a subshell here. And that's the history of atomic structure i i really hope this is clear but quickly like summarizing the main points of this unit